Hey what's up everyone, today we have gotten another new laptop. Instead of going with an expensive gaming laptop as we usually do, we have decided to stick with the budget segment. I have had my eyes on the HP Pavilion 15 which is selling for around 40,000 rupees and includes a Ryzen 5 5625U processor. It's also an Amazon choice which means a lot of budget conscious people may have seen it and are unsure whether to invest in this laptop or not. To clear up any confusion, I have thoroughly tested this laptop and have successfully found the answer. So let's get started. First we have to look at these specs. So it comes with Ryzen 5 5625U that is a 6 core and 12 thread CPU. And for the GPU, you get a AMD Radeon Vega 7i GPU. Next up is a 15.6 inch Full HD 1080p panel, a 512 gigs of M.2 NVMe Zen 3 SSD, and last but not least, a 8 gigs of DDR4 single channel RAM with a frequency of 3200 MHz. So, starting off with build and design. From the first look, you can see how slim the laptop really is. It's just 17.8 mm thick and weighs around 1.78 kilos which is fairly portable, isn't it? Ultimately, the notebook has an aluminium lid and the base, but if I have to be honest, the build quality of this device is not that great. As soon as you twist the body, you will notice some serious flexing going on. It is now impossible to open the lid with just one hand. In terms of build, it flexes the same amount as the base, but the good thing is the fact that the bezels all around the display are quite thin, with the top one providing an HD web camera. Moving down to the base, there is a full-sized backlight keyboard. Though the typing experience is pleasant with decent key travel and clicky feedback, but the up and down arrow keys are half the size of a normal button. And this is the only problem with this keyboard, everything else is just fine. Next, there is a touchpad, which is a pretty average unit. The gliding is good enough but not really smooth. Now turning the laptop upside down, you will see the speaker grills as well as the air intake while the heat is exhausted from in between the lid and the base. Now for the ports. On the left hand side, you will find an HDMI 2.0, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port that support power delivery and display port output and finally a headphone jack. Then on the right, there is a power plug and an another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port. Now talking about the display of this device. The device display looks good from the front, the colors are good enough and the contrast ratio is decent. But when you look at it from sideways, let's say at about 45 degrees angle, you can see the flaws such as the viewing angles and the color accuracy which are extremely off because it's not an IPS panel. Yes, you heard it correctly, it's not an IPS panel but rather an old style TN panel. This is a severe cut corner, you will undoubtedly have faster response times but you will have to make significant sacrifices in terms of color accuracy and the viewing angles. Now if we talk about the upgrading options, then you can upgrade the RAM up to 16 gigs, which means you can only add one more 8 GB stick to the system. And as far as the storage goes, you get only a single M.2 SSD slot, which is already occupied by a 512 gigs SSD. You can only swap the 512 gigs one with the one terabyte SSD. As for the cooling, there are two heat pipes cooling the both CPU and the GPU. Luckily, the heat spreader is huge which should greatly improve the thermal efficiency of the system. The speaker on this laptop produces a sound with somewhat decent quality. However, there are some deviations across the entire sound spectrum. In terms of battery backup, the 41.5 watt hour battery in this laptop lasted for about 4 hours of very basic usage and 2 hours of heavy usage. Now for the speed of the SSD, it can vary depending upon the brand that is used. The SSD in this laptop is really fast with the following read and write speeds. Now moving up to the most important part of the laptop, the CPU performance. In Cinebench 2023, the performance of the 5625U is really good. It's just few score lower than the i7-11 65G7 in single core test and roughly 2% ahead in the multi core test. Next up is the 3D Mark Time Spy, where the 5625U showed a quite decent CPU score. Now talking about the gaming performance, well this isn't particularly a gaming laptop and I won't use it for gaming either, though I have tested some games like the GTA and these are the results. Be 
Simeon and Buck got my page. Oh, man, if you need some bread, I can hook you up with JB's tow truck. It ain't got glamour, but it's some money to be made. So him and Tanya can smoke crack in peace? Crossing over the hand bay now. Oh, there he is. Crazy motherfucker. Jesus. We're officially in Peggy country. But it's the only game I like. Yeah. Now talking about the thermals of this laptop. When we ran the Firmark GPU test, the system started with a minimum 48 degrees Celsius and reached a max of 74 degrees Celsius. And it will not create any problem for you. Even if you are using it in a hot climate area, the temperature of this laptop won't bother you much. So finally it's time for the conclusion. I should begin by stating that there are a lot of configurations available for the Pavilion 15 and additionally how you use the laptop and experience the performance will differ depending upon the setup. Overall this notebook is more than capable of being used every day. It has the performance thanks to the 6 core Ryzen processor and in terms of comfort it is decent as the keyboard has a long key travel and clicky feedback. The laptop is really thin and light which means you can carry it around even if you are a student you can carry it to the college. But the thing I don't like about this laptop is the battery backup. Even though it's a thin and light laptop, you only get a 41.5 watt hour of battery which can only last for about 4 hours of usage. At the end of the day, even a blind man can tell that there are a lot of cost cutting done with this laptop. Like the use of TN panel and the low battery backup and whether they are too much or just enough is your call. So that's it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did creating it. And if you have any question regarding this laptop, whether to buy this or not, you can comment down below in the comment section. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay awesome, keep spreading positive vibes, peace out.